When I was kind of young, my parents got divorced, but both of their houses were in Rondebosch, um, quite close. So I grew up and I always remember a love of, of talking, um, a love of words. When I was very young, my dad uh, sat by my bed and read The Lord of the Rings to me. And when I was about four years old, it took about a year and a half. But I think from that is when this love of words and love of stories really developed. Went to school in Cape Town and uh, went to UCT and uh, now I live in Newlands. I remember going to UCT and feeling like it is a very accepting place. No one really cared where you were from, uh, which I found quite liberating. Moving to university, a very, uh, geez, like a, a huge moment in my, in my life and I, I really grew a lot. I think I just was really out there to have fun. I didn't see university as an opportunity to study so much as I thought like, now I can, now I can show people who I am. Uh, certainly in my early days, it was very one dimensional. I think just partying, drinking, um, and then it came to sort of realize that there was more to that experience. It was cool in my first few years being called the Van Wilder, but then it sort of, as I got older, I started to think more about it. But I think it was uh, because I was here for a while, but I didn't fail subjects. I just took a lot of subjects. When I graduated with my masters, um, the security guards said, hey, Anton, and we, <laughs> we actually all had a photo together with the security guards, because I was used to sometimes organize these events. So when I like, this one event we used to do was six by sevens, where you'd run around the, uh, the athletics pitch and each lap you would have a beer. And the guys would uh, eat food dye and spaghetti before, and you could you know, maybe imagine what would happen. And I would be, that was one of my earlier commentator gigs. I would be on a balcony commentating. There were some times where we had some parties on the rooftop, some sort of uh, close brushes, uh, and, and even the Green Mile where I played some rugby. I did once even have a, a good night's sleep uh, on, the, on the field when I ran for the student government and there were some people who weren't that happy that I'd got in, got a bit of a sort of provocative campaign. And then when I did well in the elections, I arrived on campus in a crown and a, a robe and walked around going like that to, to students. So some really crazy experiences, yeah. Classic binge drinker. Um, a lot of it boozing uh, on probably Thursday, through to Saturday, uh, but of course there's an odd Tuesday party, the odd Wednesday, and it was here that there started to be a little baby trouble sometimes containing when I did drink. There would be incidents, uh, and there was often times of desperate apologies the next day, and uh, just huge shame and remorse. So I think then it became more apparent that I, uh, my, my drinking was problematic. I used to always talk about the Sunday demons that I would get, and this was your classic Sunday where you've behaved, firstly you've been drinking non-stop, but you've often behaved in a way that's, you know, not gonna make you feel great. You're avoiding phone calls of private number on a Sunday, so I think, you know, for all the, the highs, there was always often very lows, and a lot of distress, and a lot of sadness, and I think the one thing that saved me was I just felt very guilty, and eventually that guilt sort of got to the point where I said I don't want to be this person anymore. It was a huge crutch. Um, I used it hugely to talk to girls. I think I was probably very scared inside. And when I drank, it made me feel brave. So in that way, it became a huge crutch because I could become this very outrageous person uh, with, by using alcohol. But then thereafter, they would, I think there was often a big discrepancy with my friends saw a difference between who I was and who I became when I, when I sort of, you know, drank. There were many Sundays where, or many occasions where I thought, oh, I should probably stop drinking, where I thought I don't want to do it, but you, you then forget and then you, you know, it happens, there's a party or whatever. And I think it was more a case of just an accumulation of just realizing I don't want this. And it really stopped being fun and I thought, I just thought there was more to life and, and I think I just, wanted to stop being someone that I wasn't and having to stop apologizing, you know, because even when you're not drinking, at the, when you're not drunk at the time, you know, afterwards if you're hungover, you're anxious, you're scared, you're making poor decisions, you, you know, you're not in your best sort of, you know, form. 
So I'd say the most massive change about my life now is that it's about around, revolves around three cornerstones. One is mindfulness, one is uh, uh, talking to someone, talking to a therapist, and the third is boxing. Um, I cannot emphasize enough how much boxing has changed my life, uh, how much it has brought me. Um, you know, I think there's those who don't know the sport that well think it is sort of a, a rough thing where you hit people, but you know, the, the things that it teaches you as a human uh, about self-control, about discipline, um, about, you know, just being the master of yourself, or I just, you know, I can't even put them into words. And, and one of the biggest things was I started boxing the day that I stopped drinking. So that then allowed me to fill in that vacuum. It's tricky to even put it into words, how much these changes, and, and you know, I've lost, on a physical point of view, since I stopped drinking and started boxing, I've lost 15 kilograms. So that's the, you know, that's the external, but the more, powerful changes are internally like after I stopped drinking I got the job with Supersport I got an acting gig I was in Tully's wedding diary um, but my relationships with other people became far more constant and consistent because I was being the same person I always was instead of one person on a Friday and a Saturday and a completely different person remorseful on a on a Sunday or a, another person on a Wednesday and I think the best relationship was my relationship with myself and that I've started to finally become someone who I could look at in the mirror and someone that I could be happy with. You know, over the past few years in particular, I've, well, I've started a journey where I started to work on myself and there's been some really, you know, uh, good changes. Uh, since stopping drinking over two years ago, the, those benefits and changes have really improved incrementally. So my main aim is to just continue feeling good about myself, to improve how I feel in my day-to-day -day life, but professionally, uh, I'm loving working with Supersport. It literally is a dream come true. I used to want to be a commentator as a kid. It didn't seem like there was any way to get into that line of work. Then there was this competition. Uh, I would love to continue working with Supersport forever. Uh, I, I love it. I love acting. I'm hoping for season two of the TV series I was in, Tully's Wedding Diary. Uh, I want to continue with my boxing as long as I can, uh, continue competing. And uh, more so, I just want to continue feeling better about myself and uh, looking after Anton. The biggest thing I would I would like to tell people is that for a long, for the longest time, I thought that it was cool to get drunk and party and get wasted. I, I literally couldn't believe that you could be a, a cool guy if you didn't go out and, and get wild and, and you know do a lot of the things that's part of that lifestyle. And what I realized is that you still can be, you know, like a, a cool, I think, you know, functioning person, but you can just get so much more done. And it comes to a stage of when are you going to do it? You know, oh, one day I'm going to do this. And eventually one day it becomes never unless you take action. So I'll just say that for youngsters, you can do it. People won't give you a hard time as you often think. People are more accepting. And uh, it's not something that could be, has to be frowned upon. It's just, I considered it as I made a decision that booze wasn't working for me. And it wasn't like I was an alcoholic. It wasn't like someone told me to. There's no shame in it. And I would love it if young people, I want people to feel good. And I used to feel a lot of distress when I drank. And if there's one person out there who's watching, who thinks they don't want to feel terrible anymore, uh, and they maybe cut out drinking, that would, that would mean the world to me.